Kelly there and welcome. Today I'm going to follow on from my first video which was talking about how to start decluttering and the process that you'd need to go through in order to start reducing the amount of paper you have in your home. And today I want to talk about the ways that you can start storing and collecting your paper in a way that feels a little bit more organised and create your own process so that you don't have to have piles of paper cluttering up your spaces all the time. So this might look like a lot but it is actually 15 years worth of memories. And and I like to think that this is organized chaos, but it's not. This is just one person's place where she stores all her keepsakes. So I'm gonna show you today how she does this and how I've set her up to do so. And all the other categories that I showed you to create, which was in the previous video, keepsakes, legal documents, general information, projects that you're working on, and current events. So I'm gonna show you what to do so that you can start having a streamlined process for all the paper that comes into your home from now on. So if you haven't watched the first video on how to start your paper cluttering journey and how to find your different categories, it would be really helpful if you went back and watched that. I'm gonna put a link below or maybe in a card above. Probably would be helpful if you watched it before you moved on to this next step in the process. So first of all, we've got our keepsakes, and this is memorabilia, things that you really don't want to throw away, either you or someone else in your home. So I have created a way for my kids to be able to keep the different pieces that are really important to them. So by treasures, I mean letters, pictures, notes, cards, certificates, things that they've earned at school or in their classroom, maybe they have worked really hard. They have got things that are important to them, might not be important to you, but they want to keep hold of them. So what I did when the kids were very small was got a shoebox for them, got them to cover it for themselves and they have since filled it up. If you can see, it's completely full. This particular daughter has since created another one that's only half full. I did it myself and I've got my own. Ooh, see? I've got my own and I store this under my bed. This is where I put things that are really precious. Maybe the kids made me a cool birthday card or they wrote something special. I put it in here. Oftentimes it's even letters from my mum or things that I receive and I want to hold on to them. So this is my special box of keepsakes. But you might not want to have a box, you might have a drawer. It just needs to be somewhere that you can keep things where you, if you wanted to, you could pull it out and have a look through and find the thing that you were after. You could keep a lot of these things digitally. You don't actually have to keep hard copies of every single letter and card you receive. It's up to each and every individual what they choose to keep as their treasure and there's just no rhyme or reason to what people choose to keep. But this is for paper, clutter, that are treasures. You're going to find a space, either a box or a drawer, preferably not a big cupboard. Otherwise you'll just end back where you were. It's about choosing what will fit in there. I mean this white box of mine is from forever. These are my keepsakes. So I'm pretty particular about what I put in there. One thing I would like to note is that children do become particular about what stays in here. At first they might keep everything. After a while when they look back and they're starting to want to fit things in there that don't fit, they realize that that Christmas card from Sam who was in their first year at school that they can't even remember who it was, isn't that important after all? And so they start to declutter themselves and get rid of things that aren't essential to make room for the things that they really want to put in there. The second thing that I would consider to be treasures are photos. I think in this day and age, photos should be digital. And that's simply because you can lose a copy and if it's on a digital format then you won't lose it. Maybe it's just because I've become familiar with making sure that my photos are scanned and available to me online. But if a photo is damaged or destroyed or lost, there's no way of replicating it. So if you get into the habit of digitizing them straight away, you can put the photo into a keepsake box knowing that if it did get lost you would still have one on file. I've done a full video recently on how to keep things digitized and stored online. You can use Google Drive or iCloud, grab a hard drive and make sure that they are holding on to all your photos and videos and creating albums and yearbooks. Keeping those things consolidated isn't always easy to set up but once it's done it becomes just very routine in how you do things. If you've got a photo and it's just random and you're not quite sure how to get it digitized, what I suggest is you use a scanner. So that could be on your photocopier. If you've got an iPhone there's a notes app in there. It'll be an option that you can just hold it over the top of the document and it'll scan it and it'll save it on your phone for you. There are apps that you can download that are scanners and they simply grab it into a bit more than just a picture. It actually becomes a bigger file, a more solid file that you can photocopy off if you needed to. The next thing that can be a bit accumulative is kids' artwork. So these are treasures. Every single piece of artwork is a treasure to your child. 
and it is to you really, but some of them have had more work put into them. Some of them are more special than others. And so what I would like to encourage you to do is to choose the essentials. And if you need to take a scan, then if they tend to go missing and you don't see them anymore, it won't matter. You can at least say, oh look, we've got it, here it is. And all you do when you are taking a scanner is just make sure you tag it with the child's name. Sometimes you get mixed up which child did which painting. So just make sure you tag it, store it on a digital format and then you are free to move on with your life. Marie Kondo does encourage people that if you have a treasure, put it up where you can see it all the time. So that is also an option with kids artwork. Have a wall where you can display their current work and then as the next work comes in, you can put up that work and the rest of it can either be binned or put on the scanner or filed away. Sometimes when they're first starting preschool and school in those first few years, it's really special to keep the artwork separated into maybe a clear file and just record when they did it. Maybe they were two and then the next lot when they're three. And it is really something special that they can look back on and see what they've created. And you can see the development and the way that they got better and better and better. Again, this is a place where you store the special stuff that you know that they've worked really hard on and that they're proud of. So in finishing with keepsakes and treasures, I really suggest that you have a keepsake box that's kept under the bed or up in the top of the wardrobe maybe your child wants to keep it on their bookshelf and they can look at it more often or you can have a drawer that's just separate for things that you want to keep safe other than that you can create a kindy book or a kindy file or a photo book even of your children's first art so that you don't feel like you have to keep everything physically on hand the next one is legal documents you do not have to keep a whole lot of stuff legally. A will, your passport, marriage certificate, birth certificate, adoption papers, things that are essential that you really, really need a copy of. Make sure you've got a digital copy as well. If you happened to have a flood or a fire and lost these main documents, it would be really difficult to replace them. But if you have a digital copy, you are more likely to be able to replace them. Especially if you're traveling or you're moving and you're not quite sure if you're gonna lose these items, make sure you take a picture of them and and get them scanned into your phone or into your computer. There are a certain amount of trust deeds or company files that you might need to hold on to for a certain amount of time legally. But other than that, most things are available to you online. Insurance policies, bank statements, anything that you need, you could probably get it just a quick phone call. They would send you a hard copy very quickly and very easily. So be careful about what you think you need to keep legally. And just have another check to make sure that you're not keeping things unnecessarily. And for your legal documents, I just keep them in a small lever arch file. This one's really old actually. This stuff has lived in here, these small amount of documents for at least 10 years and there's no reason to replace it. So I just keep this in a very safe space in the house so I can grab it in an emergency. Wow, the rain is really heavy. Why is the weather always interrupting my videos? So your next one is general information. These are documents that are of real interest to you. You have taken a recipe from a friend, you have pulled out an article from a paper that you really want to remember the information about. It's a brochure that was given to you about something you're interested in investigating later on. So what I suggest you do with these is digitize them if at all possible. So the first one is recipes. For example, you could have a digital app. If your friend's reciting a recipe to you, just put it in your phone straight away. You can pull that up next time you're wanting to make it. Sometimes it's easier just to take a picture if it's an article in a magazine. I do have one book that I keep recipes in and it's fast becoming obsolete because I don't refer to it very often. But a few cookbooks that I use that have got tried and true recipes that my family use all the time. But other than that, a lot of it is online. Google is a fantastic uncle at helping you find a recipe for things when you need to. But it's really not necessary to keep recipes just floating around everywhere. Unless of course they're written by your grandma, in which case they become a keepsake, in which case you should find somewhere special to put that in your cookbook file. The next one is newsletters, brochures, booklets and reports. The latest property values in your area or the local riding club has started up a new thing and here's all the information. So you're wanting to keep this. This is exactly the type of thing that should be kept here. If it's current and if these are things that you know you're needing to look into immediately, then do put them to the side and you will review this once a month. Every now and again you go through and think, am I still interested in that? But other than that, a lot of things can go digital. I take a scan of things that I know I'm going to be interested in at some point. Often I just flick it to myself in an email, just keep it for reference. But there's a lot of stuff that doesn't need to be there and you just need to be careful about what you're holding on to. Because if you're never looking at it and month after month it's just being put off to the next month, it's probably not going to get looked at. Another thing to keep in mind when you're subscribed to things is if you haven't been looking at them and the mail is still coming every quarter, try to unsubscribe. It really can be your friend. Same goes in the email inbox actually. Ask them if they have an online version, if it's only a manual magazine 
something that you've been sent and you only look at it sometimes because you can easily delete an email. It's a lot more difficult to get rid of a magazine sometimes. Unsubscribe is your friend. And part of it also is deciding in the moment, do you really need it? Often when I get given a business card, I take a quick pick and I say, no, I don't need one, thanks, but I'll take a photo. Or I just jot it down on my phone and I make sure I tag it, electrician or realtor. And then you kind of have it but you don't have this little itty bitty card following you around forever and you're not quite sure what to do with it. It's just really important to action as you can. If it only takes a moment to decide, just quickly flick it in the bin, take a picture, find out what you're gonna do with it in the moment rather than just leaving it for future self to deal with. Because as we're finding out now, it takes 10 times longer to sort through a pile of paper than it does in the moment to just not keep it at all. So for all that general information, your friends are Google Drive, your scanner, unsubscribe, a recipe app and a phone contacts list. So make sure you're tagging things, make sure you're keeping good files and then you should be fine with the clutter in this area. One of the other categories that you would have had is work-related projects. So here was my file that I always have sitting in the kitchen and when I sorted through it, I found that there was a number of things that my son had used for a project he was doing. I've put it to the side, I've said to him that they're there and I'll make sure that he grabs them, but I can ask him again and they can just get biffed if he's not really gonna use them. He said he wants to keep them, but they're still sitting there. The other one is my daughter's accounting program that she was working on. When you're dealing with work projects or hobbies, it's not always something that goes on forever. It's just for a short amount of time. So if you've got children that are doing exams, I keep talking about that because that's what's happening for us at the moment. If you've got someone in your home that has a significant hobby, try and find a place for them to keep their things. So it's not something that's gonna overwhelm you. It's their thing, they can keep it there, it's contained. If it's a project and it's really important, you're just gonna to have to make room for it in the moment. The clutter is gonna be there and it's really difficult not to have clutter around when you're doing a big assignment or a research project or some artwork that's got to have a lot of components to it. It's very difficult for them to keep that on the down low. You're going to have to make some room. But after that, declutter. Be very careful not to throw away other people's things. And someone throws away your stuff, it's a real invasion of your privacy. So make sure that you're asking them, do they still want it? Is it still relevant to them? Now, the last one I wanna talk about is current events. These are things that are happening right now. And once again, you can make things simple for yourself by digitizing it. So yes, in this particular file that sits in my kitchen, I keep anything that's relevant to right now. If it's tickets to an event that we're going to, a newsletter for a trip, anything that we were gonna all have to refer to needs to go in here. But I do take all those details down I put it in my phone, I set alarms. So this is exactly what this file is for. It's for current events. But there are ways and means of keeping it decluttered and that means every month or so you're gonna to have to go through it and make sure that there's things not still in there that have long gone or since passed. So in here we would keep school information, invitations, bills that need to be paid if they need some assessment. But once again, I store this information on my phone in whichever app is relevant. If it's a bill that needs to be paid, it goes in our finance document. There's all sorts of things that you can get notices for. Put it in here. And also Conmarie suggests that you keep things upright. It's just something that I've adopted. I haven't adopted everything that Conmarie suggests, but this has been really helpful. And it's simply because when things are piled, it's very hard to see what's in there. But when it's to the side you can see quite quickly what it is. So I have found that's a really suitable way of keeping things including in my office. I've just found it to be a magnificent tip. One more thing I would like to suggest for receipts, things that come in that you know have been paid, that is another place where you can scan things and store them in your phone. I have often taken a snapshot of a receipt maybe if we've brought an appliance or a bigger item that may be returned if it breaks and I keep that stored on my phone so I don't have to hold on to the actual physical receipt the scanner will scan the date, the time, the cost. It'll even scan the barcode and it can read that quite easily. You can print it off from the scanned copy if you needed to take the object back. So that's another option so you don't have to get piled up with receipts. It might be a way of doing your taxes a bit better if you are wanting to keep receipts for end of year. Just make sure you keep the receipt file tagged or put in there the corresponding subject matter. Maybe it's work related, maybe it's home related. Just make sure that you've tagged it so you can find it quickly later. So I really hope that this has helped you. I hope that this has 
gotten you started on really being able to work out where all this paper can go and how you can not be in this predicament again with having piles and cupboards and shelves of paper that you don't quite know what to do with. It is quite difficult getting started when you're wanting to set things up, but if you've got any questions whatsoever, I would love to be able to help you. Please put them in the comments below. I'm hoping that you've listened to the first video, which was on how to get started. Decluttering first off and working out what's rubbish, working out what to throw away, and then finding your different categories so that you can work out how to process them later. And remember, I've also done this separate video on how to put things on digital copy, how to make things a bit more electronic, which is very different to decluttering paper. It's how you're going to process things from now on. So be sure to watch that. I'll put the link to that in the description below. And remember, as always, the biggest compliment you can give me is a subscribe or a like. But until next time, bye for now.